Well, good morning, everyone. It is 6 a.m. here on your Monday morning. Thanks so much for joining us on Up With Krim. I'm Channing Curtis. Let's get right to the forecast with meteorologist Thomas Patrick because Thomas definitely had some rain in my house yesterday, but will that rain continue into today? Yeah, it looks like it is going to continue today, but in a different variety, Channing, because yesterday it was just kind of a steady light beneficial rain, but this morning it's more about the thunderstorms and we're going to jump right into Doppler radar because there are a handful of some thunderstorms I want to specifically point out. Let's pause the loop first of all and then zoom in directly over the Palouse. Look at this thunderstorm that is splitting Pullman and Moscow almost exactly right now. A couple lightning strikes and even underneath the lightning strikes a little bit of a heavy downpour that's just over Moscow right now. Good to see as much rain as possible because the lightning strikes can can start new wildfires if there is not much rain occurring. So we're keeping an eye on just kind of the size of the cells as much as the lightning strikes themselves. So that is the first one. The second one is out towards Moses Lake. That has now dropped all of its lightning, but there is a cell kind of over the southern portion of Grant County near Mattawa and Othello. And then one more just over uh, right here. I want to point this out. It's over Oregon. This cell is looking like it's going to be moving into the Blue Mountains region just outside of our viewing area, but that one has the strongest potential at the moment. So a handful of thunderstorms already rolling through the area this morning. This has prompted red flag warnings until 5 p.m. today because of that lightning potential, but thankfully looks like there are a few downpours or heavier downpours pours and rainfalls associated with some of these storms this morning. We're tracking this hour by hour. Over the weekend, the city of Medical Lake pushing back against what they say were plans from the city of Spokane to take the former women's correctional facility and turn it into a homeless shelter. Krem 2's Connor McAvoy has more on how Medical Lake residents are now responding. Dozens of people stood in opposition of taking the Pine Lodge Correction Center for Women and turning it into a homeless shelter. Now, the press conference did have a large turnout from the Medical Lake community, but notably missing from attendance was Spokane City Councilman Jonathan Bingle and Mayor Lisa Brown. The community of Medical Lake cheering as Mayor Terry Cooper announces the former women's prison will not be bought by the city of Spokane. I just want to assure you, that plan is off the table. So. The initial discussion, Cooper says, started with Councilman Bingle asking Mayor Cooper about the idea of changing the prison to a homeless shelter to combat the issue in Spokane previously and her turning it down. But Mayor Cooper says the change was in the planning stages from the city of Spokane, and she and Medical Lake representatives were unaware of it until recently. We didn't know about it. No one had contacted our city. No one had told us uh, that this was um, a real viable thing. Mayor Lisa Brown took to X, formerly known as Twitter, releasing a statement saying Mayor Cooper is misinformed and the city of Spokane is not looking to open any additional congregate shelters. In fact, actively moving away from that model, continuing to post on no X against Mayor Cooper's stance, well. not attending the press conference. There was nobody from the city of Spokane that were invited to participate in the event. District 10 Water Commissioner for Spokane County Stephen McCray says the event, while crowded with people, did not allow an opportunity for those with the city of Spokane being able to address the matter, but agreeing a homeless shelter should not be built at the site. Personally, I believe that uh, a better solution for our homeless issues in Spokane is dealing with it in place. The city of Medical Lake voiced the same opinion as everyone gathered on a Sunday afternoon outside City Hall to hear from their representatives, all agreeing Spokane's problem should be solved in their jurisdiction. Now, in speaking with Aaron Hutt uh, with the office of Mayor Brown, she tells me Mayor Brown was not invited to the press conference and has not had contact with Mayor Cooper about the topic, but anticipates she will shortly. I reached out to Mayor Cooper after hearing the information, but have not heard back. In Medical Lake, Connor McAvoy, Creme 2 News. Now, all of this comes after the ACLU announced last week it is suing the city of Spokane, alleging the city's anti-camping laws violate the state constitution. Now, this is believed to be the country's first legal challenge since the U.S. Supreme Court ruled back in June that cities can enforce outdoor sleeping bans. The ruling found that such bans don't violate the U.S. Constitution, even when there is a lack of shelter space. Two weeks ago, though, Spokane City Council deferred a resolution to encourage the enforcement of the city's camping ban on public property. 
At 605, let's take a look at your morning rush. More news in less time. A man was found dead after a hit and run in Moses Lake yesterday morning. The Grant County coroner identified the person as Adrian Baeza Escobedo. The sheriff's office is asking anyone who might have seen a car traveling southbound on Road M with a damaged front end to call them right away. The number is there at the bottom of your screen. In the meantime, the Cheney Police Department is asking for help finding a missing 16-year-old. The family reported Savannah Tice missing on Friday. They say she's not been seen since July 27th. Police say her hair may be dyed dark brown or even purple and may be wearing glasses. If you have any information as to where she could be, call Crime Check right away at the number there at your screen. The Nez Perce County prosecutors say they are seeking the death penalty against Skylar Mead. Mead is accused of killing 83-year-old James Malney after escaping a Boise hospital while receiving treatment. A judge already sentenced Mead to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 35 years for the escape. And that's a look at your morning rush. It is 6.06 as we take you outside. I don't see too many clouds, at least above my head here in Spokane from our studios. However, the storms are not too far away. We're tracking that to our south, which is directly behind me. And from the big picture, using the water vapor imagery from our weather satellites, look at all this pop up, these brighter white shades. These are the thunderstorms over the past 12 hours in this latest batch. That is what's moving into the area this morning, including one of those cells directly over Pullman and over the Palouse right now. So we'll give you a more detailed look on Doppler radar in just a moment here in my full weather cast. But to get you out the door this morning, temperature is not bad. 64, very pleasant morning here. A little bit warmer to the south, 72 in Pomeroy and 66 in Lewiston and that 65 degree reading out of Pullman where it is currently raining. So we're watching for that thunderstorm chance between now and 5 p.m. today. So coming up again, promising a live look at Doppler radar and just how our computer modeling handles the thunderstorm activity in the inland northwest. So those details all just a couple minutes here.